I'll do you one better. Why is the LiDAR camera bump? Sponsored by Brilliant. Go to brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie to finish your day a little smarter every day. Welcome to my brand new channel, where I talk about Apple and related technologies and culture. I'm doing a few short videos here every week and a longer, deeper dive video on the weekends. So yes, you do have to subscribe again if you haven't already because new channel, but it'll be worth it. Okay, now, over the last week or so, a diagram has been making its way across the pillars of the social cross, Twitter, Insta, blogs, YouTube, is purportedly from that internal December iOS 14 build, the one that everyone and their Animal Crossing pals now seemingly has access to. And it shows the new iPad Pro LiDAR scanner. That's light detection and ranging, but in fully digivolved iPhone 12 Pro form. That's led to a ton of people telling all of us over and over again, just exactly what it is. But I'm way more interested in why it is. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is the iPhone 12 AR camera system. Apple just does not talk about future products. You know it, I know it. Every financial analyst who's ever squandered a question on Apple's quarterly earning calls, impotently trying to get Tim Cook to do just that, certainly knows it. But there are a couple of future products that Tim Cook and Apple have been willing to talk about publicly and kind of frequently. Automation. We're focusing on autonomous systems. And uh, clearly one purpose of autonomous systems is self-driving cars. There are others. And augmented reality. My own view is that augmented reality is the larger of the two, probably by far. They are intertwined in that both require technology that can pull in data about the real world. In other words, scan and ingest the environment around them and us, understand what it is, meaning tell a person from a tree, from a car, from a rock, from the rain, and then help us in ways that are appropriate to that understanding, like by giving us better directions or warning us of dangers, bus, 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 or just making us smile as adorable detective Deadpool Pikachu runs behind the chair in the coffee shop. And I think the reason Tim and Apple, Tim Apple, are willing to talk about these future products is that, they're not really products, they're core technologies. Think of it this way. Most current Apple products have screens. The Apple Watch, iPhone, iPad, the Mac, Pro Display XDR is a screen. The screen isn't a product though, it's a technology, a component. I think in the near future, automation is just gonna be an extension of machine learning and augmented reality, just another endpoint, just another quote unquote screen for the visual display of data. Eventually, there'll be a range of verbosity versus visualization based on what we're doing at the time and the capabilities of the device, from jogging to driving to sitting on the sofa and from speakers to watches to cars. Again, a topic for another video. Apple's been working on computational cameras for almost a decade. Most of us started really noticing with the iPhone 7 Plus in portrait mode, where it could understand depth enough to generate virtual bokeh. Next was the iPhone 10 and the true depth system, not just for portrait mode or portrait lighting, but because it started boiling us in the AR water of Animoji and later Memoji. Sure, you could look at those like lame ways to turn your face into a poop emoji once and then never again, but people aren't always comfortable with new technologies, especially when they're sensory things like AR. So getting us to play with changing the world we see through real-time depth effects, or even ourselves by throwing on a silly virtual mask, it helps ease us into everything that comes next. Now, the LiDAR camera on the back of the new iPad Pro, which scans objects in front of us like a lower resolution but longer range version of what the true depth camera does to us. Add to that ARKit, Apple's framework for augmented reality, which has gone from horizontal to vertical to irregular surfaces, single person to multi-person experiences, object placement to object occlusion, and the list just goes on and on. The LiDAR scanner in particular makes all of that not just faster, but near instant. Also better, including creating accurate measurements, topological 3D meshes, better object occlusion, and better real world physical simulations. The only problem, and it's still a big honking problem, is that there's almost no reason for a regular person to use any of it yet. There are few compelling AR experiences still and no killer LiDAR apps. That's why I said when talking about the iPad Pro 2020 that most of its appeal would be for developers working on just exactly those kinds of LiDAR and AR apps. 
And in fact, it was super smart for Apple to see this iPad Pro to those developers now, well before the iPhone 12. See, on a relatively niche device, no one is gonna knock Apple too hard for not having relatively bleeding edge features fully fleshed out yet. At iPhone scale though, they'll be knocked hard, like influencer posting super inappropriate meme heart. The other half is Apple, if not leading the way, because with the iPad Pro launching a couple weeks ago, the way is already well underway, but taking the lead this fall and showing all of us what an AR camera system is really capable of. Maps is an obvious example. Google's already shown off AR in their maps. For people like me who are extremely directionally challenged, being able to see exactly where to go or exactly what something is will be a game changer. The new Find My Network and AirTags will be another. My AirPod is somewhere in the room. Great, I know that already, genius, thank you. Where in the damn room? I can't hear it. Oh look, AR is showing its outline right there under the cat pillow on the couch. Damn cat pillow. Or maybe there'll be apps like we've seen on TV shows for so many years, apps that let us recreate exact scenarios, be it for insurance or crime scene investigation. For us nerds and creators, same thing really, the ability to scan random objects into 3D USDZ AR files like Alex Lindsay and Brianna Wu have been talking about for years now, just opens up so many more possibilities for so many more people. For everyone, having high quality AR capabilities built into the rear camera, not just the front, where you can change the environment like the Clips app, but on Hulk Serum, and add objects and characters and basically paint into real world space could, sure, be a one-off thing like Memoji or a phenomenon when apps like Insta and TikTok pick it up and run with it. But even that, even that, just like the LiDAR camera on the iPad Pro seems like a developer tool for the LiDAR camera on the iPhone 12, the LiDAR camera on the iPhone 12 may end up feeling a lot like a developer tool for what comes next. And that's such a smarter strategy than just one day dumping a new class of wearable on us and making everybody scramble to figure out what to do with it and how it's gonna work. It's basically developing in secret, in plain sight. Because having to hold an iPad or iPhone up to experience this wondrous new world of AR isn't cool. Not having to hold up anything to experience it, now that's hella cool. Again, future technology for a future video, but if you wanna be part of it, get all the way up in Brilliant right now. See, Brilliant has this new introduction to neural networks, the kind that allows computers to program themselves and the way in which a lot of this AR stuff is gonna work. They show that the idea of learning through feedback underlies most cutting edge artificial neural networks, that you can wire up just 50 neurons and using that type of feedback, build a network that's capable of classifying handwritten digits. Now, extrapolate that to world scale and you can see how this stuff starts to change the world. Whether you're a student looking to get ahead while school's out, a professional who wants to brush up on the latest and most important topics, or someone who just wants to use this time that we suddenly all have to get a better understanding of the world, and then augment it. That's what Brilliant is for. To learn more, literally, to get more to learn, go to brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie and sign up for free. Be one of the first 200 people and you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for your support. I'm a huge futurist. One of the reasons I do these videos is to explore what I think are the next nearest future technologies and what their impact will be on all of us. AR seems like one of those technologies, one that's long been coming but never quite arriving. But I'm getting more and more optimistic that it'll be here soon and I mean that in a functional way. So hit like if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, ring that bell if you want YouTube to actually tell you when new episodes go live, and then hit up the comments and let me know what do you think about the oncoming AR and what do you want from the iPhone 12. Thanks for watching, see you next video.